Welcome to the May 2014 edition of MPS Today. We have a great show for you today. We're here at the Midland Center for the Arts with Levent de Nord, a band from Quebec, which has been touring our schools this week. So Levent de Nord, welcome to the show. Merci. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Uh, well, we've seen you perform this week for students from seven of our schools. It's been a real busy week for you and you've done a yes. wonderful job. We appreciate that. So how's the week been for you? Very well. Yeah. Very well. Uh, we have spent good time with the kids and mm -hmm. uh, traveling and getting installed and talking. You know, of course, it's on stage what's happening. It's the music, yeah. but also it's uh, talking with them after getting their interest. Uh, uh, you can see, in the, you know, in, the, in, in their face that uh, they have never heard something like that. So they yeah. have questions. Uh, so it's very interesting. To after the, the workshops, it's funny sometimes. The, the students are a little bit shy to ask questions. Yeah. Yeah, they ask a few of them. And after the workshop, they go on the stage oh. and suddenly, hey, what's the name of that and that and why, how it works and blah, blah, blah. And they, 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 it's, it, it's nice for us when we have the feeling then they really, uh, we open a little door for them. But and that's the main goal of the program Arts Midwest. I think it's to reach the, the kids and to uh, open their vision and to create a shock, cultural shock to yeah. maybe after those kids will be interested about other languages, other cultures, traveling, uh, realize that the world is larger than, uh, than they think it is, you know, and they, they will maybe uh, go on internet, uh, check the, the world map, uh, where we are from, ask questions to their parents. Yeah. So it's it's a big thing. It's just maybe one workshop for those uh, the kid, but uh, it will grow after. And that's, I think, a very, very important program in, in the Midwest. No, the Art Midwest program is a, is a great, great program. You know, we, we work with the Center for the Arts and Arts Midwest. Yeah. Uh, they're bringing four different groups, and you know this, but we'll tell yeah. our audience too. Yeah. Uh, bringing four different groups, one from Israel and you from Quebec, and then next year we'll have a group from... Brazil and yeah. uh, China. 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 Yeah, Brazil and China. So like you said, <coughs> Olivia, it's neat because the kids can go and look on a map, and where is Quebec, and where is China, yeah. and where is Israel mm -hmm. and, and uh, Brazil? And even though we're all very different, uh, there's a lot of things about us that are similar too, and that's, yeah. that's a wonderful thing about the program, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Well, tell us about yourselves. How about uh, names and what's your role in the band? I'm uh, Réjean Brunet, playing the accordion, uh, the bass, and a little bit of piano, yeah. singing. Jaw harp. Jaw harp, sorry. Yeah. Don't jaw forget the jaw harp. The kids jaw like harp. that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. My name is Simon. I play uh, the bouzouki and the guitar, and uh, I sing too. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm, in fact, I'm the best. In the <laughs> yeah, well, are you the best singer of the whole group? All right, guys. <laughs> I'm, my name is Nicola Boulris, and I play hurdy gurdy uh, and uh, piano, and a little bit of accordion piano, and I sing, and I, I'm the bus. Uh, oh, the I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. It's amazing. I'm Olivier Demers, I play the fiddle, violin, which is the same thing, but mm -hmm. uh, play with. Attitude. Yeah. Is that what it is? The and fiddle is the violin with attitude? Yes. Okay, yeah. or, or it's this cheaper version of the violin. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good joke. But fiddling is a style of uh, playing mm -hmm. the fiddle, the violin. And I do the foot tapping too. Yeah. And uh, I, I leave them pretend they're bus. You let them think they're the best members, <laughs> yes. right? That's yeah, very kind. That's very kind. And there's a fifth member of the group, too, we don't have on stage. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's a yeah. sound, sound engineer man. that fo always follow us since maybe three, four years now. Yeah. Full uh, time. Full time. So yeah. it's, it's a, you know, the sound of the band is also very important. Yeah. Of course, uh, we present folk music, traditional music. Uh, but the way we do it is uh, also very contemporary. You know, I mean, we're t we are not playing like uh, they were playing uh, 100 years ago. We are, we are adding a little bit more of um, harmonies, uh, compositions, mm -hmm. uh, instrumental or, sing or, or songs that we compose. So we're adding a little bit in the, tr in the big basket of traditional music. And So tell us more about 
your music? Uh, where, where are your roots and where does it come from? But, uh, our, we do a lot of research, mainly, but maybe half and half now, you know, but, uh, but mainly our mus uh, songs and music is from the traditions. So it means from old books, uh, people that we know that have mm -hmm. sang those songs. And we're trying to find and dig something really special that have not been recorded be by other bands uh, because there is other bands also. There's huh? a, a lot, a lot <laughs> of uh, band in Quebec that plays that kind of music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're trying to, to dig and to find very uh, original songs, uh, you know, something that are part that we love also. It's just mm -hmm. about that. And we try to be democratic. So when we, so I, we're not from the same region, so I can, came uh, with a song, then for me it's interesting and I, I sing it and Simon, uh, where he's from, it's a very common song, mm -hmm. not very interesting for him, so okay, we go to uh, something else. Mm -hmm. we, we try to make a sound with all our point of views and uh, it's, it's a nice challenge and it makes sure. make the band strong, I think, because we all have something to say and each song are uh, reflecting our ideas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. What is kitchen music? Tell us about that. Ben, kitchen music is a term to design a little bit this music because uh, like we say to the kids, we used to have very big family up to very recently. My dad was the, one of the youngest of 11 or uh, in my girlfriend's size, family, uh, immediate family, like uh, uh, her parents and uncles plus the kids, mm -hmm. 200. Oh my God! That's a <laughs> so lot of people. It's, it, and it's recently now. It's not like this, but uh, mm -hmm. so the biggest uh, room in the house was the kitchen to make people eat, and uh, so we used to play this music in the kitchen because it was the place where the parties were, and the dances were, uh, the, the 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 fun part of life was there, and still now. In, in our jeans, uh, when we are having a party, oh, people throw themselves uh, in the kitchen. Well, tell us about the about the band and your schedule. You know, how much time are you spending recording and traveling and? Uh, we concerts? do about uh, maybe uh, <laughs> in, an average since the last uh, five six years, um, or since the beginning. It's about a uh, hundred shows per year. Now we're a bit more like one twenty, one thirty shows per year. So it means that we're gone from home maybe one hundred six. 70 days per 170 days per year uh, because there's always the traveling you know the right. day that we right. leave and the day we, we come back and, and always a few days sometimes <coughs> during a tour that we have nothing and it's this is only the traveling we have also the yeah the the, the, the command said the promotion you know radio mm -hmm. television Interview. interviews TVs, yeah. At, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and also time to do those research uh, Regin were, was yeah. talking about Pla and to compose and the meeting we have with the office uh, and, and plus, plus, and plus, some, plus. Uh, recording. When we go in recording. a big show, we do a big show. Sometimes there's a press, press conference and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and when we uh, are in a year like this year <laughs> to record a new CD, basically it would add maybe uh, 25 days of practicing. Okay. We tried to play to practice on mm -hmm. tour uh, the last few months, but uh, we'll do another 20 days maybe of practicing, plus uh, three weeks of recording. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a it's a full time, and it's Le Vent du Nord is also uh, uh, PME, uh, small business. So we have to uh, be involved in the process with Geneviève, our our manager. She have every day she have questions about little details to fix and <laughs> we all have our um, own um, responsibilities, uh, responsibilities. Yeah. I do all the
Well, let's uh, <coughs> talk to some of our students who are really interested in music and musical careers. What kind of advice would you give? Obviously, you need to be a wonderful musician. You've been together for 12 years, yeah. touring, recording. But what would you tell students that want to become musicians or professional it's, um, uh, musicians? <coughs> it's, Dive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's jump, jump on it. Because yeah. at the beginning, when we, uh, Olivier and me, we played together for 18 years. And when we started to play together, we were young kid playing music with no team, no, no experience. So we decided to... We we create yeah we create it we we create our own <coughs> job we knock on the door we send uh, cassette Flyers, and uh, yeah. and did and our promotional, promotional stuff, kids right. uh, on the early computers yeah yeah <laughs> like <laughs> trying to put some pictures and text <laughs> yeah yeah we did the uh, montage come on, so, uh, with picture graphic, and uh, graphic, yeah. graphic and yeah. printing and the, the system D we call the the System D, the system de de, uh, self-sufficient. Self yeah, you know, sure. You, you, help, you help yourself. And you do everything. And yeah. Yeah. We start yeah. our own CD yeah. label. We uh, we really jump on it to make it possible because it's not only question of talent. Uh, many people have uh, oh. much more talent than us, but maybe not many, no, but no. one or two. <laughs> but a lot of people have more talent than than us. But but they they uh, they are afraid to do that full time. They they are maybe they are not businessmen or women mm -hmm. enough because you have to be very serious. It's not the, the 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 thing then the rock and roll guys on the road doing nothing, having party each night, and uh, yeah. it, it, it's not really true because no. to do that full time it's impossible. If you have to be quite serious, you have to be very organized. And we, and we mm -hmm. had. At the beginning, uh, with Levant's now, we had uh, a management, and we decide to split our uh, money with other person who can make the difference. Agencies, you know? manager, promotional people, mm -hmm. uh, graphic designer, pr web uh, people, uh, and everything creates Cost a, a good good pictures also we hire good photographs and i think it's a uh uh, uh, uh total uh, no man for the the one who want to the, the kids who want to start a, yeah. a career i think it uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a call uh, you, need, you, need, <coughs> you know you know that you want to do that because if you're not Commitment. sure about no, that you 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 will be stopped by life you know because there will be some uh, some danger or some uh, moments that it's not good for your your you, but you will leave because it. Sometimes it's frightening that you don't see anything in the future. But it if you continue and you dig, you need to have fun and pleasure to, to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you all study yeah. music in school? Uh, except Réjean. Not me. Yeah. Okay, but you guys studied music. <coughs> what did yeah. you study in school? Did you? Uh, I'm uh, also, I worked many years <coughs> as an electrician. Okay. But I, I, but I always played music since maybe my first gig, my first concert uh, in front of people. I was maybe... Two to me? No. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, yeah, 14, 15 okay. years old. So you're always doing music too. Yeah, right. and my, no, my, my first trip, in with, yeah, it was at uh, 14 years old. It was in '88, taking the plane from Montreal, going to Saskatoon uh, to play f with a small organ uh, folk organization. It was uh, for the Canada uh, Games, uh, you know, summer games. Sure. Uh, and and be yourself. Don't try to sound like the others. It's interesting to. To faking to be uh, Led Zeppelin or uh, or Jean Sebastien Bach, but you have to go over that because what the people want, they want something different. They want uh, something personality, true, something. something true. Yeah. Be yourself, and even if it, at the beginning nobody <coughs> think it's really interesting, it's the only thing who will be interesting for the people. It's if you have something different. Don't not to be not different like you. you you have the same 12 notes than everybody and the same 26 alphabet uh, than anybody. It's, it's the same basic thing. But to be personal, it's, a, a, it's very important to bring a little, a little thing. Yeah. At the beginning, maybe you will not know what is different on you, but it's there. Often. Mm -hmm. 
Don't try to imitate. And a good advice I would like to, to say maybe you know, is uh, to as as much as you can pick up things from schools, from your music school or theater also. Uh, you know, we talk about music, but mu music you have to present it in yeah. front of people. People are sitting there and you are playing music. You, you even if you are a very very talented <coughs> and very good player. <laughs> If you don't look to the people, if you don't communicate your emotions, if you if you don't interact with the people, uh, people will say you were he was good or they were good, but uh, it, it didn't touch it didn't touch didn't me. Didn't reach them, yeah. See? You really look like you're having fun most of the time when you're up yes, there. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So let's take a moment for a special treat. We have Rachel Grunder here. Now she's from the IB French class at Midland High School with Amy Rankin. Now the students have put together a series of French questions for the band and we'll do that interview right after this. Je sais que vous êtes du Québec, mais de quelle ville? Euh, moi, je viens de, du sud de Montréal, euh, tout près de la frontière américaine, euh, dans la vallée du Richelieu, dans un petit village qui s'appelle La Colle. Euh, mais présentement, j'habite à l'est de Montréal, euh, une petite ville qui s'appelle L'Assomption. Moi, je viens d'un village, d'un petit village qui s'appelle Saint-Combe dans la Naudière, donc c'est tout au nord de Montréal, là, à à une heure et demie de Montréal, environ. Un, un village qui, où la musique traditionnelle est très, très vivante là, depuis, depuis toujours. Moi, je viens de Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu, qui est une petite ville euh, au sud de, de, de Montréal, dans la vallée du Richelieu aussi, Montréal. comme régent. J'habite un peu plus au nord de cette vallée-là maintenant. Euh, une vallée, d'ailleurs, que mes ancêtres habitent depuis 1678. 1600. Moi, je suis né dans une ville euh, qui s'appelle Laval, qui est dans le fond la banlieue de Montréal, la banlieue d'Ortoir, comme on appelle. Les gens qui habitent à Laval travaillent à Montréal, généralement. Qui n'étaient peut-être pas tant que ça à l'époque. Quand je suis né, c'était la campagne. <rire> c'était les fermes en, au nord, surtout de l'île, c'était des fermes. Maintenant, c'est vraiment... Ça, ça a doublé de population. Et j'habite maintenant à Montréal, dans la grande ville. Oui, je suis allé euh, à Laval... Euh, l'été dernier. Oh, ouais. okay. Et j'adore Montréal aussi. Oui, c'est une belle ville. Euh, vous habitez toujours au Québec? Oui, oui, oui. Oui, ben, quand on est à la maison, quand on n'est pas sur, en, en tournée ou sur la route pour les spectacles, oui. on habite chez nous. Ben, ouais, c'est à l'Assomption pour moi. Mais... On est tous environ euh, est ça, à une heure, une heure et demie des autres. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, on est à peu près dans la même région. Autour de Montréal. Mm -hmm. ouais. Quand avez-vous commencé à apprendre vos instruments? Ben, j'ai commencé quand j'étais tout petit. J'ai commencé le piano quand j'avais 4 ans, 5 ans. Mon père prenait des cours de piano et ça m'a donné le goût de, de jouer ces petites pièces euh, faciles. Et vers 10 ans, j'ai commencé à jouer le violon. Moi, j'ai commencé à 10 ans à prendre des cours de piano. Il y avait un ami de mon père qui était musicien qui enseignait à ma grand-mère, mon frère et moi. Donc, on, a, on apprenait tous les trois avec... Euh, ma ma grand-mère avait acheté un piano, on habitait avec elle. Et, à, vers 10 ans, donc, j'ai commencé la musique. Moi, vers 10, 11 ans aussi, euh, j'ai commencé à jouer de, la, de, 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 ce, de, de ce style de musique-là aussi traditionnel, là, parce que tous mes, mes oncles et mes, mes grands-parents étaient des chanteurs, musiciens aussi. Donc, j'ai commencé avec eux à, à cet âge-là. Moi, j'ai appris l'orgue, euh, pas à l'église, pas, de, pas, de, pas à l'église, mais des, des chansons populaires. J'avais peut-être 8, 9 ans, mais tu sais, des, des, des petites pièces pas compliquées. Après ça, j'ai appris, ben, mon frère a commencé le, à jouer le violon, puis après ça, j'ai pris le piano. Puis l'accordéon, j'ai commencé à 15, 16 ans, à peu près. Puis un peu de basse euh, à l'école, euh, au high school, ou l'école secondaire. Vous voulez être musicien depuis que vous êtes jeune? 
Alors moi, j'étais adolescent. J'étais, euh, je pense, 15, 15 ans et tous les soirs, vraiment tous les soirs de la semaine et de la fin de semaine, au retour de l'école, je revenais avec euh, mes amis musiciens et la locale de répétition était chez moi, dans le sous-sol. Et tous les soirs, on jouait de la musique pendant des heures et puis euh, j'avais vraiment l'impression, on avait tous l'impression d'ailleurs, que c'était notre vie qui allait euh, prendre ce, ce, ce rythme-là. Ce qui a été le cas pour quelques-uns d'entre nous, d'ailleurs. Moi aussi, de, depuis que je suis tout jeune, puis autour de 15 ans, 16 ans, j'avais des bandes de, de rock. On jouait dans les, dans les bars, on avait 15 ans. Puis euh, je me rappelle, un été, on pratiquait euh, aussi comme ça tous les soirs parce qu'il y avait un concours à la fin de l'été, puis on pratiquait les, les morceaux tellement souvent que j'arrivais plus à dormir parce que j'entendais je, les, les, les morceaux. C'est pas nouveau, ça. Puis je, 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 je suis allé voir mes, mes parents, je dis, je suis en train de devenir fou. <rire> <rire> puis euh, parce qu'on on pratiquait, on pratiquait tellement que c'était une seconde nature. <rire> Mais comme pour, pour moi, ce serait... Bien, comme je pense comme pour beaucoup de jeunes euh, qui jouent de la musique, on espère tous un jour euh, euh, faire notre métier euh, avec la musique, mais, mais, euh, mais pour moi, c'était pas nécessairement, je me voyais pas seulement faire ça, euh, je, mais, je, mais je croyais que j'étais pour toujours en jouer, euh, même, même si j'arrête de jouer avec le groupe, ben, je vais toujours jouer de la musique, t'sais. Euh, avec moi, mes, ma famille. Ou, ben moi, c'est un peu comme, ouais. comme Régent. C'était un rêve. <coughs> J'ai un frère un, un aîné qui est musicien professionnel, donc que, que, je, voyais, que mm -hmm. je voyais faire, donc lui qui était déjà professionnel. Donc, c'est sûr que je m'alignais un peu sur, 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 sur ce que lui faisait, mais en même temps, ce n'était pas un, un objectif ultime d'être d'être musicien professionnel. C'est un rêve qui s'est réalisé, en fait. Euh, J'en suis très, très heureux. Mais il, y a, il y a beaucoup de musiciens au Québec qu'on connaît, des amis, qui sont d'excellents musiciens, mais qui ne veulent pas euh, faire, carrière. faire carrière. Ils veulent avoir un métier la semaine et, et jouer les vendredis soirs, les samedis soirs, avec beaucoup de bonheur de pouvoir jouer de la musique. Mm -hmm. Puis c'est des musiciens, ils jouent des fois vraiment mieux, beaucoup mieux que nous. Là. Mais c'est pas, euh, pas ça qu'ils voulaient faire. Euh, comment vous vous êtes rencontré? <rire> Olivier euh, et moi, dans un, un, une alarme de feu euh, à, au cégep. Cégep, c'est comme le collège, le college pour vous. Mm -hmm. Et puis, euh, on a, il y avait une alarme de feu, il était dehors avec son violon et on s'est rencontrés. Et ça fait déjà 18 ans, donc. Et puis, les autres gars, on se connaissait. Mm -hmm. Simon euh, était d'une famille de musiciens, comme il vient de le dire. Régent aussi. Donc, on connaissait les gars de, de leur réputation personnelle. Et euh, on les a invités à se joindre à nous, euh, respectivement, il y a 10 et 8 ans. Euh, Pourriez-vous me raconter une expérience intéressante que vous avez eue pendant vos voyages? Non. <rire> non. Intéressante? Il n'y en a pas vraiment. Non, non, rien. <rire> Ou tout en même temps. Tout est intéressant. Il y en a beaucoup. Mais il y en a beaucoup. Euh... Ben, la, la semaine dernière, euh, ben, où il y a deux semaines, pour en prendre une récente, parce qu'il y a un livre qui ouais. était comme ça d'histoire, <rire> euh, on était en Idaho. On était à 15 minutes du spectacle. Ah oui. On suivait le GPS, mais il nous a fait passer par un, un trail en mm -hmm. garnotte, en, en, en terre. Mm -hmm. Puis finalement, à 10 km de, 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 de la guigue, la route est fermée parce qu'il y a de la neige. Et là, ah. c'est des montagnes. Et là, là, on est dans le désert. Il n'y a aucune maison, personne, aucune voiture. On a presque plus de, de gaz. L'essence. L'essence. On a, puis c'est un détour de deux heures et demie pour euh, retourner. On était juste. Il n'y avait côté. pas d'autre route. Et on avait. Il fallait faire le tour des montagnes pendant deux heures et quart, deux heures et demie. Puis on n'avait plus de, de pétrole, de, de gaz. Mm -hmm. Donc on a roulé 50 minutes sur le neutre, on the neutral, 
<rire> parce que ça descendait pour arriver à la station d'essence. <rire> Ça, c'est un, un exemple. Un exemple. Mais on n'a pas manqué d'essence, mais on, on faisait tout ce qu'on pouvait pour économiser l'énergie. C'est un peu comme Apollo 13 dans le film. C'est pareil. Ils gardent toutes les énergies qu'ils peuvent. Là. Pareil. Oh. Euh, Qu'est-ce qui vous inspire ou influence? Euh, on est influencé moi, certainement moi, est quoi? de... de <rire> on, on rencontre beaucoup de d'autres groupes, d'autres musiciens, donc plus vieux que nous, de, depuis longtemps. Donc moi, je m'influence quand même de, de eux, de, de leur attitude aussi sur la, sur la scène. Tu sais, c'est pas tout de jouer, c'est un spectacle, c'est beaucoup plus que seulement que jouer ce qu'on a à jouer sur notre instrument. Donc, faut, donc je m'influence quand même beaucoup de d'autres musiciens. De d'autres. Moi, je dirais que ouais. le Québec et l'histoire du Québec m'influence beaucoup dans ma volonté d'exprimer quelque chose dans la musique du vent du nord. Je pense qu'il y a quelque chose pour moi qui est fondamental en relation avec l'histoire de notre musique. Moi, je pense que ce qui m'influence, ce qui m'a influencé à jouer cette musique-là, c'est peut-être euh, de faire tout pour pouvoir promouvoir le Québec. Donc, de jouer cette musique-là, fait partie de cette démarche de parler du Québec, de faire connaître identité. notre identité, notre musique et notre culture et, et tout. Donc ça, ça m'influence beaucoup là, pour continuer. Bien, toutes ces réponses. <rire> moi aussi, le Québec et l'histoire, et mon histoire personnelle de famille euh, et, et de connaissances euh, que j'ai eues dans les, dans les années, euh, dans les... 25 dernières années, peut-être, de, 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 de rencontrer d'autres musiciens, des gens que je, que je revois des fois 20 ans après, que je n'ai pas revu depuis longtemps, puis des joueurs de, de violon ou de, de chanteurs. Ou, et c est, c est, on dirait que ça, ça fait que ça, ça, fait, ça fait tourner la roue euh, de, de revoir, puis de, de se souvenir des, du passé, de, nos, de, de mon histoire, de, 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 de ce, qu de ce que j'ai appris, avec qui j'ai appris, avec... C'est un bon moteur. D'accord, c'est tout toutes les questions que j'ai. Euh, merci, merci beaucoup, le Merci. C'est merci. 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 très gentil. Merci. Bravo pour ton français. Wasn't that great? Thank you, Rachel, and thank you, Miss Amy Rankin and the IB French class at Midland High School for that wonderful interview. Let's finish up with a few more questions for the band. I think for us also, what is important to achieve is to be able to speak about Quebec all over the world. Because for us, we talk a lot about uh, our politics in Quebec and the way we want to create our own country. And, uh, and so we want to share that to people because it's not everybody that knows that we exist. You know, that there's a French community of 8 million people who try to survive in North America surrounded by 350 million of Anglophones. And we have also the, a good achievement. It's maybe if you can... Uh, Uh, invade uh, USA to make everybody speaking in French. I think it's oh, a kind okay. of uh, a, goal. a goal, you know, to... Uh, that's, uh, yeah. that's ambitious. Yeah, that's ambitious. Think, uh, yeah. Amb it's a plan. We will see if it's possible. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, right? <laughs> well, I, I came across an interesting quote from Richard Thornley from the Penguin Eggs magazine. He said, along the way, there are plenty of tunes and songs from that deep well of, of Quebec memory impeccably played and recorded with unmistakable soul and spirit, talking about your music. So what is it about Quebec that comes through in your music? Ah, a lot of things. We talk, uh, we have a lot of historic mm -hmm. songs, mm -hmm. so we really take <coughs> moments of our history to talk about who we are and what can be Quebec now. So we use, we use pretext. A pretext, is this a pretext? Probably not. Pretext. Pretext, yeah. Pretext, yeah. yeah. To, uh, to use the past to talk about the present. Or the future. And, and maybe so, the future. So we, uh, we talk a lot, a lot about Quebec in our, in our mm -hmm. songs. And even if it's not a political song or an historic song, we still have that, that soul of what can be uh, our emotions, like what, what can make our music different. You know, we have... Uh, sensibility with our instruments, we can, yeah, we're really close to the, 
our country. I think it's uh, our music smell the land of Quebec. Yeah, I think it, it's also in the show that we will present tonight. Uh, you will see, bang, as you already noticed, in between us, we interact, uh, we tease each other, we will tease the audience too. We, uh, we are representing the way we live in Quebec. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a totally different way to live in Quebec. The, the, the way the society is organized and the, the interaction between people is different. There's maybe a little bit less of the don't want to offend you know, it's direct in the face, teasing, yeah. <laughs> but always with humor and uh, joy. So it's, uh, we try to present that aspect also in the show. Yeah. And also part of the show is a um, very intimate moment to uh, also represent some sides. It's not just the joy and the party, and mm -hmm. there's some moment will be more... Uh, intimate uh, around one microphone to to sing a lament a complaint and so that's another big side of our, our tradition sure yeah. it sounds like representing that community is very important to you in your, yes. Yes. In your yeah. art yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, lightning round. So quick questions, just one or two yeah. or three word responses. If you weren't a musician, you would be? A musician. <laughs> <laughs> That's first, second, and third. Is that it? Uh... I would love to make furniture, wood, working with wood. I would love to, to uh, have that talent. Yeah. It's an amazing talent, yeah. Probably a music uh, instrument maker. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe a stage di director, okay, or maybe doing some staging for bands, in or theater, for, or, yeah. or for music too. Okay, uh, maybe for me a technician, sound technician, oh, well, in studio or live, because I like why? the back side of the music. I would love to be a puppet. Uh, oh, wait. yeah, a puppeteer, you know, the big, the big, the puppet. big one, the marionette, yeah, yeah. Yeah. to be a uh, dancer. <laughs> The master of the puppets. Master of puppets. All right. Very good. <laughs> or maybe politician. <laughs> yes. Ah, yeah, politician. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I, yeah. Politician would be your side job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not enough serious for me. All right. <laughs> That's a lot of lightning answers. All right. So what are your favorite places to go to? Now it's home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the road a lot. Yeah. Uh, Norway, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, the Scandinavian countries, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, for the landscape, but for the, the town or Glasgow in, uh, in Scotland. In Scotland, yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Down to, to Rajan? Uh, Australia? Yeah, okay. Oof. Oof. Covered a lot of the world right there. Oh, yeah. All right, and who, when you have a time, who do you listen to? Who do you like to listen to for music? Daniel Lanois. Okay. I listen to a lot of things. I really, uh, I like especially Breton traditional music. Okay. I like to listen to uh, many uh, singer-songwriters from Quebec, like uh, Louis-Jean Cormier, uh, David Marin. Uh, yes. Okay. A few, if I can say a few words, uh, country, pop, rock, or Celtic. <laughs> That's all I. I like everything. Classical. A classical. Yeah. Jazz. I like to, uh, rap. I like to listen to any kind of music. In fact, yeah. he put serious radio. Yeah. And, and I change every day my <laughs> yeah. XM radio. You know, one day is bluegrass, one day is country, one day is. Yeah. A lot of different things. That's a lot, yeah. and it, it's interesting that all your answers are all over the place too. So you yeah. like a lot of different music, huh? Yeah. Uh, last question: Who would you like to play for, if you could choose an audience or a person? An audience? Hmm. Any uh, sold out? <laughs> yeah, place. a sold out auditorium. <laughs> I music. would love to play our music in front of Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Okay. I think he's he's a he's a guy who did a lot for uh, world music uh, mm -hmm. in the world. I think he have uh, good ideas to bring uh, to mix 
uh, the instruments you, didn't, you don't know, maybe it can be interesting about the, the sound of Le Vin du Nord. I, I'm, I'm sure it can be fun, and uh, I have a, a lot of respect for that, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. And he never came to our concert, I'm very disappointed. Oh. Yeah. But we played for Sean Connery. Yeah, we played for Sean Connery. Oh, it's and yeah. he came because we played in Glasgow in a big, huge festival. In, uh, for and our it, anniversary? Yeah, it was uh, our 10th anniversary, and we, Geneviève, uh, called the festival, hey, it will be the 10th anniversary, do you think you can do something special? And they say, yes. <laughs> It was 26 musicians playing our music, two strings quartet, wow. a Scottish band, a, a Irish band, and a Swedish band playing our music. But three very good bands we, bands we know from 25 from years. Mm -hmm. And it, Scotland and Quebec are related in terms of we want our independence. And uh, Sean Connery is uh, probably one of the biggest Scottish independent people who want to be uh, independent. So he was in the audience because it was a band from Quebec okay. who was openly independent too. So uh, it was great. That was exciting. Mm -hmm. You guys? Man, I would like uh, to play for my father that passed away in 98. Mm -hmm. That never saw yeah. me play with uh, Le Vendu so. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Good. Probably more for uh, our audience in, in Quebec because we you mm -hmm. don't have chance mm -hmm. to play uh, a lot in, in you're on the road a lot yeah yes but mm -hmm. not in, in Quebec it's mm -hmm. I hope one day mm -hmm. we will play more sure. than now in, okay. in Quebec yes mm -hmm. great yeah well I tell you it's been uh, it's been a wonderful week and we really appreciate your professionalism and your interaction with our students and and your music so uh, yes, Olivier yeah. Nicolas Simone and uh, Rajan, thank yes. you very much. It's yes, been a great pleasure. pleasure. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And stick around for more MPS Today right after this. No. That's slow. That's slow. Uh, That's slow. Uh, the average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Hi, welcome to this month's edition of Counselor's Corner. I'm Lori Hallberg, Counselor at Dow High, and with me is Craig Hawkins, Counselor at Midland High. First, I'm going to start out talking about seniors. Um, it's almost the end of the school year, and those seniors who are planning to attend college next year need to sign up to have their final transcript sent to whatever college they decide they're going to go to. They'll do this through parchment.com, and they already have an account and should know how to access it. When they go on to parchment.com and select the college that they want to send the transcript to, students need to choose next grading period. That way, we will wait till the end of the semester until all the grades are finalized before sending the final transcript to whatever college is requested. Now going down to freshmen or incoming freshmen, so the opposite end of the grading um, scale, um, at Dow High, we will have an incoming freshman orientation on May 16th. And it's just a way for those that will soon be freshmen to get to know the layout of the high school and um, feel a little more comfortable for when August and September come around and they actually start school. Another thing that juniors and seniors need to do in the month of May quite often is to take an advanced placement or international baccalaureate test. They would have already signed up for these earlier and it allows them to take a test and potentially, based upon their scores, earn college credit for that. And it's always dependent upon the college that it, they apply to. And we always recommend students to contact the college that they're applying to to make sure that they will accept those credits. But that's a pretty busy time for some juniors and seniors in the month of May. Another thing that we do, we have senior exits and we contact seniors and gather scholarship information from them, both scholarships and grants that they may have earned. We like to get a total of that so that we can compile a number and present that so we can see exactly how well our students are doing and how much potential money they get in that kind of uh, arena. So that's it for the month of May. Please join us again when we have Counselor's Corner in June. <laughs>
Get out to the forest. Let the kids connect to their roots. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah! Woo-hoo! Hey, guys, wait up! And discover the wonders of nature with your family. These trees are the key to our way of life. Fresh air. What a glorious morning! Clean water. Woo-hoo! This is great! An endless forest adventure. Yeah! Let's rock this jungle! Yo, this is on tap territory. How amazing! <laughs> Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to MPS Today. Please join me in welcoming to the studio two of our wonderful art teachers, Nate Adelson and Buffy Hall, and they're here to talk about the Elementary Art Show. So Nate and Buffy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you us. for having us. You bet. Well, let's start off with you telling us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, what do you do for MPS and how long have you been with us? Well, my name is Buffy Hall and I've been teaching art for Midland Public Schools for 18 years and I teach both at Woodcrest and Blessed Sacrament. Okay. And how about you, Nate? I've taught in the district four years and I currently teach at Dow High, Carpenter Elementary, and Jefferson Middle School. Okay. And just like a lot of teachers, we have a lot going on this time of year, don't we, in the art world? The spring is a very, very busy time of yeah. year for everybody in the art world and everywhere. So now the elementary art show was out at the Midland Mall. So tell us about how that uh, came to be. This year we had a great opportunity to have the elementary art show at the Midland Mall. We hung the art show last Thursday, so it's been up for one week. And the art show will be up for a total of two weeks, two weekends, and we'll take it down next week. And what's the feedback you've gotten from parents about being out at the mall? Well, I heard that some parents were posting things on Facebook, so yeah. we even have social media involved with the elementary school art show at the Midland Mall. And Nate, what have you heard from parents or students out there? A lot of excitement, a lot of buzz going, uh, yeah, we're going to be there. Well, you know, I can't wait to see my work. They couldn't make it the first night. They went over the weekend and saw their stuff and grandparents, grandmas and aunts and uncles. We had a reception last Thursday after we hung up the show. We had um, students that had their artwork on display, their siblings and parents, and we even had some grandparents that came to see the art show. All mall the art walkers. teachers were there. The mall walkers yeah. got to watch us yeah. hang up the art show. They enjoy it. Yeah, that's great. Now, what uh, I heard from a parent who was really excited because they had they have two kids and they each had something up in the art show and they just thought it was so neat they could do that. And that sounded like uh, Dan Irvin out at the mall had helped arrange for some discounts for folks as well? Dan Irvin is the Midland Mall manager and has been excellent to work with and he even had some of the local restaurants give discounts to the families who had students at the reception on Thursday. They got discounts at um, Yankee Candle. Um, I don't know, like 10 percent off of 10 percent off. And then we had a lot of families that went out to eat to yeah, celebrate, so course. it was a win-win for everybody. It's kind of a fun, a fun family night out, wasn't it? It was very enjoyable. People. Well, uh, Nate, can you tell us a little about some of the goals of the elementary art show? I think it's first and foremost to get the students excited and confident about their work, and um, they're always enthusiastic. So that would be, I think, the first one to give them recognition, and then let the public see, you know, what what cool stuff. And creativity they can put out there. I think people are amazed when they walk through the elementary art show and they see a work done by a kindergartner yeah. or a fifth yeah. grader. Wow, I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. Or very impressed at the quality of work that the Midland Public Schools art teachers are able to produce with their students. It really is amazing. I'm impressed every time I go to a school or to the mall now and see the work that the kids do. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. You know, what are your goals uh, with kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth graders? What are we trying to get them to be able to do? Not everybody is going to be a future Picasso, obviously, but what are we trying to get our students to be able to do in, in our art classes at the elementary level? We like to give our kids a variety of art materials to work with. They get to do some um, watercolor painting, tempera painting, like to use oil crayons, color pencils, three-dimensional work like clay and paper mache. Mm -hmm. So as an elementary art teacher, we like to give the kids a wide range of materials to work with. And throughout the years, we definitely like to see student growth, that they are learning more each year with the materials that we're giving them. Absolutely. Anything else you'd like to add it's, to that? It's great Nate? for problem solving. They come mm -hmm. in enthusiastic, mm -hmm. and they come in, and they run into problems. But um, you know, they figure out their own ways to figure it out, and you know, they get five years of elementary, six now with kindergarten. It's really it. fun for the kindergartners to look at the work by the upper L and then they'll say, wow, I can do that yeah. in a couple years. And for the parents to see that. Sure. See where they're headed. Now we have other 
events going on as well, because there's events out at the Loon Stadium as well, right, Nate? Correct, yeah. Uh, middle School Art Show will be at Dow Diamond again this year, and that's uh, May 1st uh, to May 7th. And that's been a great partnership for Absolutely. the years for us, too. And then we know that the high school art show will be going up soon, and the high school art show is at the Midland Center for the Arts, and that will be happening in the spring also. Like you were saying, spring yeah. is a very busy time. There's a lot going on. There sure is. Well, we appreciate all the work that you do with our students, and uh, we're thankful that you came down to talk with us about the elementary art show at the mall today. So thank you very much. So if you're not you're able to see it this year, then yeah. look for us next spring at the Midland Mall. All right, and we'll run some uh, shots right now of some pictures uh, of the kids' artwork right now, too. So. Well, great. Cool. Thank you. Great. All right, thank you. Well, thanks for watching our show. Uh, remember, you can catch us on your cable channel 190 and on Uverse channel 99. And on our YouTube site, just go to the district website, www.midlandps.org. Click on the YouTube button in the top right-hand corner, and you can catch all of our shows there. If you click on the subscribe button at the top corner of the YouTube page, you'll get notices whenever we have a new show. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on MPS Today.